Good morning and welcome to Sun Up. I'm Dave Deacon, and it's that time of year where producers are thinking about what's in the soil. And Brian, producers are going to be out in those out in the fields right now of canola and wheat. And, and what should they be looking for? You know, right now is a perfect time to be scouting for about everything. Uh, there's some incidents of disease that are starting to pop up, but we need to be looking at those plants for nutrient deficiencies and making plans. Um, you know, we've had that that fall that had good growth, those those areas that had good moisture had really good fall growth. Then we went into one of our wettest winters we've had in quite a while. So with rainfall comes water movement down the soil profile and when water moves down soil profile so do our mobile nutrients such as nitrogen and sulfur. So especially in canola this year uh, in a crop that we do not put a lot of pre-plant nitrogen out and a crop that is sensitive to sulfur we need to be looking in two areas. One we need to get out on that canola crop as soon as the ground dries and the temperature allows for it. With that, because of the season, if we're going to see a sulfur response in any year, it's going to likely be this year. So look at opportunity to throw a few pounds of sulfur in with that top dress. It doesn't need to be any particular expensive source, but get, get a few pounds of sulfur out there so as that crop starts getting into this green up time, it has plenty of nitrogen and sulfur. We've seen a lot of concerns about purpling in the canola crop. It, it tends to be anything that causes stress in the canola plant creates a purple, purple coloration. So I've seen areas where it's a nitrogen stress, phosphorus stress, soil pH stress, uh, even moisture stress in certain areas have caused that purpleation, purple color in canola. So the answer is it's a stress of some kind. To answer that we need either just soil samples from good and bad areas or soil samples plus tissue samples from the good and bad areas to compare that in the lab and see is it a nutrient, is it a soil, what's going on. Is this the time of year to actually be getting out there doing that application? Absolutely. You know, with both winter wheat and canola, we can have applications starting in December moving on through. Uh, for the canola crop, you really have to be out there before bolt. That is that time frame we need to get out there before that bolt starts coming up, which could be in the next month or so, depending on what you're planting. On wheat, we always try to get out there before jointing or hollow stem. The same time the, the dual purpose guys are pulling off cattle is that end of the time when you want to be out there with your top dress. Wheat can respond later. So if we have deficiencies develop after that time, it's still worth a look at maybe getting out there with a sprayer and getting some nitrogen on then. Now let's let's talk more about wheat. There's there's we, we're, we're always talking about you know mm -hmm. this is the time to be out yep. there. What are you seeing in the wheat? You know the wheat, those uh, that went out with just pre-plant uh, starter fertilizer only, um, have been trying to get out there. It is the time we need to get nitrogen out on those fields that just had that starter fertilizer and nothing else. Um, get out there as soon as possible. Get that on. Uh, those that went out there with a pre-plant in September or August and hydrous pre-plant, we're seeing those residual nitrogen values very low, probably due to the leaching we've had. So I would be very cautious, even if you were all pre-plant up front, to be out scouting your fields. Look for any symptomology of nitrogen deficiencies. And if these fields have been grazed and going to grain, can, uh, consider how much removal has been made by that, that beef and maybe replace it because this year we've likely lost some nitrogen due to leaching even if it hasn't gone really deep our soils have a tendency to have sideward movement if you have a limiting layer somewhere around 10 to 16 inches down water will hit that and if there's any kind of slope it will fall that slope downhill there's actually certain ways to apply that nitrogen that are better than others absolutely you know any opportunity to get out there with nitrogen right now, we should be looking at it. Uh, new applicators in hydrous, we can top dress with anhydrous now. Urea is always an option. Try to time it with a rainfall or get it in that way. But more and more, we have a lot of liquid applicators going out there. So sprayers putting on UAN. While that dual pass UAN and herbicide is always efficient, we got to be careful because with a dual pass herbicide UAN, we have, we're stuck with using a flat fan nozzle. And when you combine that with a no-till environment, whether you were in wheat or canola, we have a opportunity to tie up a lot of that nitrogen that we're applying in the residue. So it's always my recommendation, if you can split that uh, herbicide and the nitrogen application, especially in no-till, we should do that. And use streamer nozzles or something that concentrates that liquid into bands to push it through that residue. And thank you very much, Brian. And for more information on that, you can go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.